This is the Contractor's Corner podcast series from Solar Power World. Welcome to another edition of Contractor's Corner. I am Kelly Pickerel, Editor-in-Chief of Solar Power World. Solar Power World is a solar industry magazine and the publication that puts out this podcast every month. So thank you so much for joining me today. Before we get into today's interview with Verigi, a solar installation energy company out of Arizona, thought I'd kind of catch you guys up on everything that we're planning here at Solar Power World. We are super, super excited about the 10th anniversary of the Top Solar Contractors list. So we put out this listing of the top solar installation companies across the country each year. And we are wrapping up the the finalization of the 2021 list. It'll come out in July. So we're planning our virtual gala for all the listees to attend to to find out where they are on the list. And, And we're giving out some special awards. So we got that coming up in July. And our whole team, the whole Solar Power World team, is so excited because we just booked our travel for Solar Power International. So we will be down in New Orleans in September to attend the the big show. So please let me know if you guys are attending. I'd, I'd love to meet up with everybody since it's been so long since we've, we've seen everyone and we want to see some new products. We want to see what services are being offered out in the, the solar industry. So we're super excited to get down there in September. I've never been to New Orleans myself, so I'm really excited to check out a new place and, and eat all of the really good food. I am unfortunately gluten intolerant. So if anybody has any recommendations for where I can get a gluten-free beignet or any of that other good food, please let me know because I'm going to be looking for it. I'm very excited to get down there. But the editorial team is also just really excited to get back into learning everything that's going on in the solar industry and, and get to see all those new products. I, I actually might be participating in a live roundtable with other podcasters within the solar industry. We're still kind of working out details for that, but we, we likely will be doing that at Solar Power International. So um, obviously I'll be letting everybody know about that across social media and, and everywhere else. So if you want to swing by and, and see a live version of podcasters <laughs> talking about things, um, you can catch us at SVI. So that's just a quick little update from us here at Solar Power World. Uh, let's just get right into this month's Contractor's Corner interview. Thanks. Let's get started with this month's edition of Contractors Corner. Today, we're talking with John Mittman, who is Vice President of Distributed Energy Resources for Verigi, an energy services company based in Arizona that focuses on the commercial market. So thank you for joining me today, John. Thank you for having me, Kelly. So tell me about Verigi, the company. I know like, you're involved in a lot of areas. You're doing efficiency, construction. Tell me about the company as a whole. Yeah, so Verigi, it, it's a fun question we get asked often because we've really evolved a lot over the years. Um, we really came together uh, through the course of the last five years, uh, basically being disparate energy service companies in, in some capacities on my side, really the solar developer and EPC kind of role. Um, but we are really now known as... Um, an ESCO, an energy services company, uh, cover the nation. And we, you know, we're really excited to, to offer more than that. You know, I think one thing with Verigi that really differentiates us is that we have a lot of internal self-performance capabilities and a lot of broader expertise for the reduction and production side of the equation. So uh, a lot of it's coming together and, you know, we're really excited about where the future will take us. Mm-hmm. Okay, you kind of alluded to this, but uh, back in 2019, six energy services companies merged to form Verigi, and, and one of those companies was Natural Power and Energy, which is 
the solar company I'm most familiar with and where you came from. So what does the merging of all of these energy services companies, what does that do for the solar business specifically? How has it changed or evolved for you? Yeah, so, you know, again, coming from a solar developer perspective, um, you know, we we always had these conversations with our customers about what what made the most sense in terms of timing for adopting solar and and you know if they wanted to move forward with energy efficiency in the future, you know, how best to approach that kind of scenario. So, with us all coming together, we're actually now nine companies as of a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, um, you know, it's really starting to bring that kind of holistic vision together from a um, from an implementation approach as well. So we have we have the full suite of energy efficiency, water efficiency solutions. We always like to pitch. You know, you you want to explore reduction of your energy before you start talking about production, and obviously the the expense related to solar and and you know the related technologies there. So coming together, it, it's really tied tied the whole message together, and, and we're we're now one team in that conversation with the customer rather than having kind of separate competing interests. So it's tended to really help us build out a much more successful national and uh, kind of master planning holistic provider type of role. So yeah, it's been really great, and um, everyone's it's really been a, a I think a great marriage of the different companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Vergy is a nationwide company. So is that also like the solar aspect of it that's also nationwide? Yeah, so our solar experience previously really uh, centered around the Southwest, mostly Arizona, and that's where natural power and energy came from, uh, but also in Indiana, where one of our Vergy companies um, also kind of made their way through the solar business. So what we're doing now is, you know, we have about 15 or 16 different active state markets and where we have those established relationships on the ESCO side, um, the solar offering, you know, it, it's now kind of a product, if you will, in, in the suite of services that we can provide. And now we're just kind of expanding that offering to those other markets where the rest of our company already had a strong presence. So we've had a lot of really good good traction, as everyone knows. You know, the the, the business on the the DER or DG side has really accelerated over the years. So timing wise, it's, it's been working out great. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, you you kind of talked about how you know you focus on reduction and then production, but how do you approach a customer's energy needs with this whole holistic approach and and when and how does solar get involved? Yeah, uh, you know, the million dollar question. Um, so we we really take a patient and measured approach on the front end as we're trying to determine what our customers' goals are, goals are, excuse me, and uh, you know, really what the facilities that they have. Um, you know, the benchmarking exercise, trying to understand exactly what their energy profile looks like and when we when we kind of get the, the big picture and we align that with the goals that the customer has we create this you know long-term strategy which is potentially multiple phases of you know ECMs energy conservation measures which includes solar uh, at times solar can be on the front end uh, really if we have a good alignment with those efficiency measures if funding and everything like that plays out perfectly if it kind of varies but for the most part solar if we approach it in that kind of a manner can really enter the equation much earlier um, because we kind of have you know that that strategy all put together on the front end mm -hmm. okay since you're working within the commercial market, what kind of experience with solar do you have? What type of projects are you completing? Are you doing carports, flat roofs, a little bit of everything? Yeah, a little bit of everything. I would say that the full spectrum of options, I guess we haven't really um, experimented yet with, you know, floating solar racking, for example, mm -hmm. but we've done uh, a significant amount of carport, custom carport type structures over the years. 
um, ground mount systems. We, we've, our largest project was a 25 megawatt small utility scale project for Indianapolis Airport. Uh, and again, depending on where you are in the country, rooftop is always a good option if you know the warranties are are in good shape. So the full the full spectrum, I would say. Mm-hmm. Okay. Does Verigi ever bid on solar jobs solo, or are you just kind of working through that commercial customer portfolio? Uh, yeah. So if I'm understanding the question, it, it's really. Verity is a turnkey provider um, on the development side, on the EPC side, and also on the operations and maintenance side. So generally speaking, we we have um, a, a really dedicated origination team that uh, focuses on energy projects more broadly, but um, we're, we're trying to, to be really customer direct in as many cases as possible. And, and that just helps us to make sure that the end result is, you know, fully aligned and fully quality controlled to the extent that really makes the most sense. So yeah, we, we, we did solo, but we have a, a team of, you know, subcontracting resources and, and other at times general contracting partners that help us to, to fill the gaps. I would say that it's, it's a um, slightly market dependent, but for the most part, our, our goal is to be, really the developer and EPC in most of our most of our projects on the solar side. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, so many of your customers are like very public facing, like K to 12 schools, healthcare institutions, local governments, even airports. How do you bring more public awareness to your solar projects with those customers? Are you you know encouraging kiosks or offering other educational material? Are you doing anything along those lines? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You know, our, we have a, a dedicated marketing group, so we're always looking for, for ways to, to engage the, you know, constituents of whatever public customer we're working with. Um, usually we, we try to, on the front end, hint at the upcoming project, you know, try to get a little bit of excitement built up and make sure that, you know, the communities are actually on board with the initiative on the front end. You know, we've had some experiences over the years where, that hasn't been fully aligned and, you know, obviously it's always better if you have uh, over communication in those cases. So yeah, we have a, a big, a big marketing effort, I'd say to, to get the word out, to celebrate, you know, through ribbon cutting events, you know, press releases, all of that. Um, on the kiosk side, we, we definitely still include those. I, I think historically solar kiosks, you know, were kind of a, a custom type piece of hardware that you you put into you know the front office of one of these facilities, and over the years we've kind of realized that um, unless the IT group of whatever that entity is, the, the you know public entity, unless they're they're fully familiar with it and actually in charge of kind of making sure it works, those keys don't always stay you know fully operational. Yeah. Without a lot of maintenance. Um, so we uh, we definitely put a lot of education material out, and, and what we try to do on the kiosk side is just give those um, those links to kind of the custom web interface that tells the story about the project, and they can kind of put that into their own um, you know outside facing um, kiosk that mm-hmm. you know they are already implementing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> If the internal IT department doesn't know how to, you know, keep up with that stuff, then it's just kind of a eyesore in the front office. <laughs> yeah, the blue screen of death. You never want to see that right. you know, as you enter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is Verigi's thoughts on energy storage and batteries? Are they making sense for your customers? Yeah, we're extremely excited and really looking forward to what the kind of new wave of solutions looks like. Uh, we, we've had a lot of dedicated uh, time and energy on developing energy storage solutions, you know, starting to expand into what those might look like in a resilience type of application, um, you know, different forms of energy storage, obviously, being that we're a, a broader energy services company. When we talk about energy storage on the solar side, we're mostly talking batteries, right? But 
there are other forms of it that can kind of help to to balance out a customer's load over time. So, yeah, we're we're really excited. I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, certainly from the standpoint of um, you know peak reduction and energy arbitrage at, at you know in very very uh, isolated circumstances. Um, but uh, really, most excited about how that's starting to fit into the microgrid type picture and and really starting to improve the resilience of these different customer sites that becomes a lot more relevant when you start talking with public customers as you can imagine and so we've had a a lot of uh, adoption on that front recently Um, we we were kind of an early adopter on the energy storage front more broadly and, and had you know some of the first commercial energy storage projects with a handful of utilities um, so it's it's been an interesting learning curve, and I think the biggest thing on that front is is working closely with the different utility providers um, to make sure that those those policies and procedures align to really allow for cost effective systems to still be part of the picture. So mm-hmm. that's I would say the the main um, focus that we have now is just trying to get alignment on the different utility fronts to make sure that there are friendly you know, uh, policies that allow us to do these types of projects more broadly. Yeah, yeah, definitely. What other product advances are you kind of looking forward to? Are are you anticipating using bigger, large format modules on your projects, different ways to ballast? Like, what are you looking to the future on? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. I think relevant or relative to where we are today, right? Today is June 22nd. Um, and I think if, if you were to ask most providers now, they would say, how do you reduce balance of system costs, right? Mm-hmm. Solar modules and inverters, when you look at the, the whole equation are, um, you know, 25% of it at times, if not less, if not more in, in certain circumstances, but it's the the steel and the you know electrical, all the all the different bits that go into a system that I am particularly interested in, in continuing to optimize. You know, I, I think on the supply chain front, solar modules are mostly commoditized. So as long as you're getting a tier one provider, you know, it, we're we're kind of ebbing and flowing with how the market plays out. But uh, certainly higher efficiency modules um, on a you know power rating side helps us to put the same power uh, capacity in for a lower fr- footprint and therefore lower balance of system costs. So I would say anything anything on that front that allows us to be more efficient just from a general construction standpoint is what uh, what we're looking for. Um, and that, that's just, I would say, on the traditional solar and energy storage front, um, mostly solar. But, you know, I think product advances, there, there's this whole movement of um, – you know, Internet of Things integration, and, and uh, that's that's one thing we'll, we'll get to in a minute um, on our side that we're we're trying to really develop and and take advantage of how how much more value you can get from you know integrated solutions. Where do you think there could still be some improvement in the solar industry? I think where we are uh, specifically on the solar front with. A relatively mature market you know we're still dealing with a lot of things at the permitting level um just you know soft costs that really can be i think made a lot more efficient um so certainly you know just general familiarity with with you know commercial solar permitting practices and um trying to streamline what that you know what that process looks like for our industry at each of at each of the regional AHJs, I know it's a big challenge. Solar app, obviously, on the residential front, has has taken some big steps there. Um, in our in my effort on Aracia, the the board of Aracia, you know, we're really trying to to push uh, on the commercial front the same types of streamlined processes. Um, so I'd say on that front, there's there's certainly gain you know advantages to be gained. Um, I think also. Generally, on the financing front, there have been um, a lot of activities over the years. Uh, at times, still, especially today, you know, when you still have tax equity involved, and and really, I saw a report recently, tax equity has gone down. I think something like 45% for 2021 relative to last year. 
So we're trying to figure out, um, you know, how best to underwrite and finance projects. It, it's still, you know, with solar being such a, a large capital expense um, and the related solutions, you have to figure out a way to amortize it as effectively as possible. And so I think, you know, green banks and, and such like that have, have been discussed at times. I think there's there's certainly opportunities on that front that could um, could take us to the next you know level of being more uh, streamlined. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very interesting. So what can we expect from Verigee as a company and maybe within the solar industry in the next few years? What do you have planned? Yeah, so Verigee, um, we, we are growing rapidly and, you know, always looking for, for folks to join the team and help us kind of with some of these goals. But um, we, we're really trying to take this integrated solution, holistic solution type of approach with all of our projects and all of our customers. So what I'm particularly excited about, we had a recent announcement internally for our distributed energy resources group that you know, I'm, I'm heading up to, to really start to bring together grid modernization, vehicle electrification, and you know, associated infrastructure, distributed generation, obviously solar is a piece of that, and then um, you know, also kind of dialing in the O and M picture a little bit better. So, to that end, you know, we we've, we've developed our own, um, I would say, integration platform uh, by Verigee. It's called Orchestrate, and um, because we're in ESCO, we have a lot of um, building automation and controls capabilities already. So, what we're trying to do now is we we have you know solar monitoring, solar dashboards, you know, predictive analytics, analytics that are built into a new dedicated solar module called Light Level, which we'll be um, showcasing at SPI this year. We're excited about. Um, but but really bringing that all into an integrated platform, give the customer one source of, you know, access to basically get all of the information and, and um, you know, manage and monitor all of their different facilities in the same kind of place. And then that starts to, to create a feedback loop with how, you know, energy storage uh for example, plays into an overall facilities, um, you know, picture. You know, if, if we're trying to flatline a facility's load over the course of the day, um, obviously solar, you have that that parabola during sunlight hours. Well, how do you start to maybe use thermal, you know, energy storage in the buildings, just cooling, pre-cooling, to, um, to really flatline, um, you know, most effectively? So... The, the, the idea, I'd say the holy grail that we're really, really targeting, um, at least in, in my team, is to bring it all together, have, uh, you know, an, an EV infrastructure platform that talks with solar, that talks with energy storage. The building is reacting in real time and, and really kind of predictive cooling um, as necessary to to bring the overall energy picture to a point where it's the most cost effective, they're most resource efficient and you know it gives them an integrated solution in the long term um, for all of the kind of modernization technologies that are that are in the works now so there's really a lot there to unpack and there's a lot of um, you know specifics that have to unfold over time but being that Verigee you know we're focused in the in the U.S. market uh, we think that because we have a techno- technology team and we have, you know, such a wide base of experience in, in developing these, you know, integrated energy master planning type solutions. Um, start, you start to really see a much, much more optimal, you know, picture uh, for our customers in the next few years on that front. Mm-hmm. So are you exhibiting at SPI or just, uh, just walk in the floor? Uh, well, the plan right now, uh, you know, it's, it's a relatively new type of, you know, um, I'd say a externally available product. So we're, we're kind of working out the details there now, but uh, I think, yes, we'll probably have a, a booth at SPI and um, I'll, I'll definitely be there and, you know, happy to, to see everyone again after the last year. Right, right. Yeah. I just booked my travel for SPI. So I, I'll, I'll be stopping by to make sure I can see what you guys are up to. Thank you for talking to me today, John. Really appreciate it. 
Yeah, my pleasure, Kelly. And, you know, we appreciate all that you guys do on the, you know, the media front. This has been another edition of Contractors Corner. Join us each month as editor Kelly Pickerel chats with solar installers across the country. Thanks for listening to the Solar Power World Podcast. Visit us online to hear more great podcasts, view industry videos, and read our great editorial content. SolarPowerWorldOnline.com. See you back here next month.